welcome to this time of worship where we are spending time together, coming together from all sorts of different spaces, places, and times. This morning, or today, or tonight, however you are experiencing worship in this moment, is the fourth Sunday of the Easter season, a season that we intentionally reflect upon the abundant life uh, and the well-being that is offered to all people through the grace of Jesus Christ. The early church celebrated the life, abundant life offered in Christ in this way. Scripture says, day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. Last week, we spent time together imagining our hearts as temples in which God dwells through prayer, meditation, respectful conversation, serving the needs of others, offering goodwill to others. These are all ways that we nurture the temple that is the place where God dwells and our heart temples connect us with one another across time and across space. And we believe this is at the heart of the matter, that spirit connects us and makes us one no matter what. I'd like to invite us to take a little bit of time, just a few moments here, to pause and to allow the Spirit of God to connect us. So if you choose, you might want to close your eyes or um, relax your gaze or just soften your gaze. And just for the moment, just focus on your breathing. And let it slow down a little bit. And as you are able, still breathing, place one of your hands on your heart or perhaps on a pulse point. And as you're breathing, just get in touch with your unique rhythm of heart beat. And you may want to just begin to gently tap on your heart or on your pulse point or on a table or on your leg, the rhythm that is your heartbeat. And we pray, God that creates all, heartbeat of the universe. In this time we center on you In this time we center in you, for you made us, and you continue to be with us in every moment, in every breath, in every beat. We welcome you into the temple of our hearts. And as you are still breathing and staying in touch with the heartbeat that is yours, I share with you a, a stone that I have. I call it my worry stone. Sometimes I call it my heart stone. And if you have a stone or something like that nearby, just consider creating one for yourself. and. In my times of meditation and my times of worship and in this moment, I just imagine whatever worries I might have, whatever concerns I might have, I um, just place them here in the heart stone and know that just as real as the touch and the feel of this heart stone is to me, the touch and the feel of God in my life and in me and with me in whatever concerns or worries I have is just as real. And so I, with my heart stone and you with your breath and your heart beat, imagine yourself just setting aside whatever worries or concerns you have. You don't need to throw them away. What I'm inviting us to do is to just entrust them to God for the next few minutes. And we can pick them back up later if we need to but allow God to hold them. 
And together, one last breath is our amen. And I'm going to place my heart stone here by my candle and um, light this candle. If you have one, you might want to light a candle where you are or just consider that as part of your worship practice in the future to remind us that Christ is, for those of us who call ourselves Christians, the light of the world, that which brings us all together. In the Gospel of John, Jesus described himself as the gate for a sheep pen, the gate that keeps sheep safely tucked in together and the gate that kept out all that would threaten the safety of the sheep. And the threat that Jesus described in John 10 is the threat of thief. And Jesus described the activity of the thief as to steal, to kill, to destroy. And Jesus as gate ensured that all of those within his care would live abundantly. This last week, I visited two hospitals, two different hospitals, and one of those hospitals would not let me enter the facility, and the other hospital allowed me to enter to spend some time with a family. But before I could enter that hospital, however, I came face to face with the gate. A nurse that asked me questions, that took my temperature, that gave me a homemade face mask, and then a hospital administrator that took my picture, that scanned my driver's license, that made careful note of where I was heading in that building. But the gatekeeping didn't stop there. When I arrived at the intensive care unit, I was told, if you want to go into that room, you're going to need to suit up. And so I was given a a paper gown, a new mask, and gloves. Gatekeeping to protect all of those inside the hospital, to protect all of those outside the hospital, gatekeeping to ensure that all of those within, those who are receiving care and those who are offering care are not harmed. I appreciate the gatekeepers in our hospitals, our nursing homes, our rehab centers and more. I appreciate their dedication to protecting those who are most vulnerable. And we could say with cynicism that these people are just doing their jobs, except for the fact that they are in many cases quite literally giving their lives for the sake of others. Like Jesus, the gate. Their hope is that those in their care live life to the fullest, whatever fullest looks like for each person. There are countless ways that life can be lived to the fullest, even in days of quarantine. So many ways that we can live life abundantly. Being together, whether physically or virtually, is one of the ways that has become so important to many of us. Texting, phone calls, emailing, sending cards, family Zoom, family house parties, notes taped to our doors, prayer stones suddenly showing up in our mailboxes, chalk art on the sidewalks, birthday drive-by celebrations. We're finding ways to connect to one another and to offer goodwill to one another that had not entered our minds two months ago. I hope and quite literally I pray that our creative and intentional habits of connection will continue long after our seasons of quarantine have ended. We've been remembering in this season of Easter the way that the first followers of Jesus stayed connected after Jesus' death and his resurrection. They met together, they ate together, they praised God, they had the goodwill of all people. And today's scripture from the book of Acts fleshes out a little bit more the specifics of what they did, the early church, those first believers, some of whom had to meet in secret, some of whom were isolated. They found ways to nurture the well-being and abundance of one another. Let's listen to this from Acts 2. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, 
They broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. This scripture from Acts, along with Jesus' own words in the Gospel of John, declare that God's desire is that we be cared for, we and all people, that all people live life to the fullest, that all people live an abundant life that involves supporting one another with food, with fellowship, with sharing, with sacrifice, with goodwill. The sacrifices that we are making in order to slow down and eradicate the spread of COVID-19 may have caused some of us to feel robbed as if a thief had entered our sheep pen. And to be sure, we do not have the freedoms that we had two months ago, but I wonder what could happen in our hearts if we shifted the way that we think about those sacrifices. So for instance, for me, for me to give up for now, for this season, the freedom to be at my church office, the gift of people dropping by, plopping down in a chair, us talking about everything and nothing, my not being there, people not being there, not because we've been robbed of anything, but because in this time, this is how we're called to share goodwill. For us to give up for now, for this season, the freedom to be gathered in our sanctuaries or our temples, worshiping or hanging out in uh, what we call narthexes or gathering areas or lobby, lobbies with home-baked treats and fresh coffee and great conversation. How are not being in those places, not because we've been robbed of anything, beca but because this is how we share God's desire that all people have well-being and have the opportunity of life abundant. I am mindful of those who are giving up during this pandemic so much more than the freedom to be in an office or in a worship space or to have conversation. There are women and men and children who live each day with a greatly reduced level of assurance that they will be safe physically, emotionally, economically at risk for a variety of reasons. All who work in healthcare facilities, regardless of their role, all who have been furloughed, who have had their income reduced, all whose jobs have disappeared, whose businesses are dying, all who drive trucks, deliver mail, stock shelves, pack groceries, clean spaces, so much more, and all whose home lives were already unstable, now in this time vulnerable, vulnerable to the abuse of frustrated and enraged caregivers. These are people who may feel very, very short on goodwill. These are people who may very well feel robbed. And we, we are still the church. We are still the church. And the isolation that we choose right now does nothing to diminish the way the love of God fills our hearts to overflowing with what we need to be goodwill for those who do feel robbed. And when we nurture our own heart temples with intentional generosity, with gladness, we cannot help but be mindful of and to pour out God's abundant love on all people. I have uh, here with me today uh, a glass of water. It's filled to the brim and I invite us just to imagine that this glass of water symbolizes for us God's abundant love. And God's abundant love for me in this case because it's my glass of water. And then um, I'm going to take my heart stone and imagine that um, when I place my heart, when I place my heart stone in the care of God's abundant love, when I entrust my very self to God, it overflows. The love of God overflows. How can we overflow in love and care for people 
who are feeling robbed in these days. Friends, what can we do to spread goodwill beyond ourselves, beyond the boundaries of our own experience of God's love? What can we do to create more goodwill in our homes, in our relationships, in our neighborhoods, in our communities? How can we offer abundance and goodwill to people who are working so hard right now, to people who are most at risk right now, to people who may very well feel robbed. I encourage you to spend some time making a, a plan of goodwill, maybe just one thing that you can do. Maybe just intentionally saying thank you for being here to the people who are working Maybe just one way that you could offer a reminder, you are not alone, you are remembered, you are not taken for granted. How will you share? How will you share the abundance, the overflowing love of God with others this week? I just want to offer a prayerful blessing for you as we close. I pray that you know that God is with you no matter what, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you anticipate facing, God is with you, filling your cup to overflowing. May you trust God with those feelings. May you know that your feelings, whatever they be, are as real and as honest as any feeling ever was, and that God longs to hold them with you and lead you into life abundant overflowing. Amen.